Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're playing Project Hospital today. In this game, we need to build and maintain a hospital. And if we're lucky, get hands-on with a diagnostic process. We're gonna make our own hospital, so let's go ahead and select this nice, beautiful, empty field. This is probably way more space than we need, but hey, what the hell. Got some fun options down here. Free building, yes. Unlock all departments, yes. Patients can die, triple yes. Okay, here's our blank slate that will one day become a hospital. Let's start by building some beautiful foundation. There you go. We have a bunch of these icons down here which represent all the things our hospital can do. We're going to start with emergency which of course is going to need its own dedicated waiting room which we're going to put dead in the center here. Perfect. And we need us a doctor's office. We'll go ahead and put here in the corner so the doctor can flee as quickly as possible. Okay so first things first this thing wants us to add a bunch of stuff. Stuff in tan we need to have. Stuff in yellow is a mere suggestion. Okay we'll get all the good stuff including the exam table here. Disinfectant dispenser. Needs to be placed on a wall. Oh, yeah. I guess we should put up some walls. Ooh, striped, eh? Oh, yeah. That's hideous. There we go. Now we can put our disinfectant dispenser <laughs> just right here on the wall. On this weird propped up wall piece. Same with the eye test. Yeah, cool. There we go. Claustrophobic and makes you wonder if there's a webcam staring at the exam table. Oh, what's this? Oh. Oh. All right, now we're talking. The doctor sits right there on the stool. The patient sits right there on the porcelain throne. And what the hell? While we're at it, let's go ahead and just shove in a MRI. Sure, why not? Okay, that looks great. Now let's work on our waiting room. We're gonna make everyone fight for a single chair in the very center. And let's make everyone feel really uncomfortable by surrounding it with these crazy looking x-ray doors. There we go. According to this, we still need a restroom and staff. How small can I make the restroom? <laughs> okay, so it's, it's kind of the honor system. Stage one of our hospital is ready to go. Not a sink in sight, by the way. No walls, no sinks, no mirrors, no problem. Things are looking good. This check mark means that everything... <laughs> Everything is okay. Now we just need to hire some staff. We need a day doctor and a night doctor. Oh, Linda Lee here only has one out of five doctors on her Yelp doctor score. Female, 24, intern, 0% experience in anything. And we have to pay her approximately nothing. You're hired. Okay, now let's hire a night doctor. Ugh, what are all these qualified candidates? Specialist, fellows, get out of here. I'm gonna go with Paul here solely for his 6% general medicine ability. We're open for business. Looking real important over here. Oh, look, here comes our first patient. There he goes, right into the waiting room. So now they're having a conversation about what the problem might be. And she's like, why don't you have a seat on the examination table? Wait, where are you? Oh, you know what? There's no walls on the outside. It's just an empty field with just an empty floor. And this guy being examined where everybody can watch. Oh my God, that guy's using the bathroom. That guy, <laughs> that guy just did it. This guy just decided to take his shirt off. I'm not sure why he decided this was a good idea. Okay, that was fun to get the hang of it, but let's go ahead and make this a little bit more um, streamlined. Don't worry, not like really streamlined. More more stuff streamlined. Okay, so our doctor's office, nice seven by seven right in the middle here. This time around, we're gonna give it some lovely walls on all sides. And by walls, I mean solid glass on all sides. What the hell is this? Oh, it's just like a bathroom stall door. Well, I guess that's the way in and out now, isn't it? So let's see, what is the best way to make sure everyone from the outside can get a good look? Oh, what? I can't put this thing on the glass? Okay, so be it. We'll have a couple of little squares here where we can put all the stuff we need to. Okay, there we go. Perfect doctor's office. Okay, now that we've done that, we need a waiting room. I want to make sure that everyone's comfortable, so we're going to put plenty of seating. Yes, the doctor will see you soon, but until that point, go ahead and make yourself comfortable. So we'll build out the rest of these departments. We will build out radiology and labs and ICU and all this stuff, but first we're just going to see how this goes. Oh, we have a young lady coming. <laughs> she just stops and is like, what is this? Oh yeah, that's how you want to do your doctor relationship, right? Doctor sitting down, you just standing right next to her. This dude over here is like, what, what am I supposed to do? So here's Brooke's problem. Possible diagnoses. Nail fungus, athlete's foot, <laughs> iron deficiency anemia. Here, we can control if Linda takes over or if I take over. Now it's under my control. And I've decided it's anemia. And here's your iron supplement. Well, <laughs> what a shocker. Linda's like, look, I gotta charge you anyway. Yeah, this is working as intended. Bunch of dudes standing around watching this other dude do his exam. Here's the problem I'm seeing. We gotta slim up this area. They're all standing outside the toilets. There we go. Much better. Gentlemen, don't be shy. If you want an appointment, you gotta get in the circle. Well, this is working great so far. Basically, Linda sits around. She just does her thing. She's picked her favorite toilet, I see. And then she defeatedly goes back to work. Okay, well, it's time to open up all these other departments. Let's install some elevators. We need to add a new floor. How many floors can we add? It would appear that four is the limit. Okay, radiology. Let's do this. When I think x-rays, I think putting them right near some toilets. Let's see, what kind of equipment do we need? Obviously, we need the 
x-ray equipment. I like that there's no like shield for the people to like go on the other side of to hide from the x-rays. We're gonna choose one of these people because they have all wild eyes. Okay, there we go. And she's sitting here like, I'm just gonna air type from the side. Really, I'm just staring at the street, plotting my way of getting out of here. Next is labs. Every time I've had to get labs, I've had to go to like not just a separate building, but it feels like I have to go like three cities over every time. So in the spirit of that, we're gonna go clear up to the top floor. And I'm just gonna draw this foundation out like this. Oh yeah, this is perfect and physically possible. This is where you go to get your labs done. Oh, but this is just the waiting room. Don't you worry. Once you need to get the actual labs, you have to leave that space. Don't trip. Don't forget you're on the fourth floor. Also, we're not monsters in case you get a little tired. I've put a toilet up here. Take a load off if you need to. In so many ways, here is finally where they do the actual labs. We're actually going to make this into a room. You've earned some normalcy after going through the maze. Except for the part where in the center of the room, there's just a pit to nowhere. Oh, you know, now that I look at it, when you're done with labs, you can just jump right down into the parking lot. <laughs> oh my god, look at him go. <laughs> oh no. Also, I love our gravity-defying hospital. Like, it's like a wafer sandwich thing. There's no walls. This is a physics disaster, although at least my maze has a roof on it. I love our doctor that walks all the way around, took a dump in front of that dude, and then just sat back down to play air solitaire while that guy watches. So let's build out the ICU. Now, I feel like the ICU is something you want to be able to access quickly, because those patients need a lot of care. There we go. There's the ICU. It forms an eye. It's like my hospital is a stage play, and like, we just have to improv that there's doors there. You know, actually, let's take this ICU bed and just put it right here in plain sight of everybody. All the tools are still in the back there, but we want to make sure whoever's in this bed getting their critical care feels welcome. So we're just going to put all the vending machines around them, maybe a couple couches, just to make sure they're getting plenty of sleep. I'm going to put some nice displays all around them that they can't see so that other people can watch sweet, sweet TV while they're just trying to rest. We're going to give the rec room, I mean the ICU, some nicer flooring, I think. At least in the front. In the back, it's still going to be gross hospital. Everyone gets the gist of it. Everyone understands that this is the ICU down here when you come to get all your snacks. Okay, let's see if we can't blaze through the rest of these departments. The big one we're going to need is surgery. It's going to need, like, the place for them to take patients, but also on-call room and nurse station and diagnostic regular ward. Okay, this is a second floor job. Now, obviously, getting surgery is really scary. Talking about it's really scary. So let's go ahead and give it a purgatory brick. Very menacing and confusing double doors. One public toilet right in the middle. Yeah, that seems comfortable. We'll make the office kind of this weird thing behind the elevator. And you know what? I'm even feeling charitable. Let's put this one tiny window on the inside. We put the exam table in a place that's a little bit hard to get to. And also we put a chair so you could view the elevator. And as always, we go for the lowest possible bids. Two out of five doctors. Great. So the on-call room we'll go ahead and put right here. To work in this hospital, you get paid the least amount of money and you have to deal with weird stuff like this. I used to play The Sims and I used to actually like put pride in my aesthetics for stuff and now everything is just a dumpster fire. You know, there's a bunch of these prefab things that we can actually do. So like we could just go over here to like the diagnostic unit. I'm kind of curious what it's even supposed to look like. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Let's just go with that. And like, what does a regular ward look like? Oh, it's like a thing with rooms in it and it's like got all the good stuff. So that's definitely not how we're going to do it. You are going to be right here in front of the elevator. Oh yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is going to be real comfortable for everybody. And as if that wasn't bad enough, we're going to take the high dependency unit and put it right out here. You have to really look at all these patients as you go through here. Turns out we can take roof ventilation and just put it right in the room. So hell yeah. We'll just face it towards this guy and then yeah, we'll just put one like that. You over on the edge get something really special. You get just the air conditioner unit itself. Okay, great. This is really coming together. The operating room is going to be the whole third floor. We're only going to have one operating bay. Everything that doesn't need to be super close by is just going to be way the hell over there. The nice thing is the game will tell you exactly where this stuff needs to go. You should really put a table right there. Maybe some sick tunes. Maybe some mid-surgery meals. You know, maybe a nice latte. You know, maybe a nice bathroom break. Operations might take a while. Oh, and you know what? We should probably establish an entrance to our place now. So let's make it a little bit more purdy. Just a couple of palm trees. Glad you can put these palm trees in the parking lot. Yeah, put some fountains in there too. Different colored grass. Well, that's what we're going to use to show the path then, even though I'm sure nobody will use it. There you go. That's that's how you get in. I'm so curious what people are going to do with the hospital now. I hope this waiting room's going as well as I could have hoped. Oh my god, when patients come in here, they're required to sit in the chair that faces the elevator. I don't know what your deal is. There's a lot of possible things here, but I think we're going to have to hospitalize you. And now that she's hospitalized, is she just going <laughs> to... 
<laughs> At least she was smart. She chose the bed that was farthest from the TV. And now that she's here, I know we claim to know what it is with 100% certainty, but I feel we're gonna have to first do some tranquilizers and then probably ICU hospitalization. That's how this goes. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, and huh. <laughs> now she's got a feeding tube in. Oh God, this is horrible. I don't even have more treatments I can do. I guess we can do all these examination things. Blood analysis, blood draw, sampling. Just do the whole thing. <laughs> See, now this is what I'm talking about. Now this poor woman in the ICU is in the happening part where all the doctors and nurses hang out, have themselves a cola, <laughs> stare at this woman with celiac disease who's now under a feeding tube. Oh God. Wait, why are you coming in with the stretcher? What are you doing to this dude? Look at her navigate this guy through that hallway. Where are you taking him? Oh, <laughs> this guy's like, I just had like a tummy ache. Oh, you know what I just realized? To hire more personnel, we need our call rooms to be a little bit bigger than this. We're gonna carve a section out of our operating room right over here in the corner. We're gonna make this our new on-call room, which isn't even gonna have walls. It's just gonna have the requisite stuff you need to force as many people as possible to exist in here. Yes, everybody, sit here. Be on call in case we have some surgery needs. Wait a minute, when did they send her home? I mean, I guess they had to at some point. She wasn't actually sick. Well, there she is. She got taken out of the ICU. Well, let's send her back. Ah, oh, much better. <laughs> okay, we need every patient to be in the ICU. All right, I think I gotta build this out. So let's build an on-call room. We're just gonna do this super fast. And we gotta get the nurse's station, and we gotta get the observation room, which we're gonna put in the very center of the hospital. And of course, we're gonna need a trauma center. So now we're just filling out all of our space. So for trauma, we're gonna need some operating beds. No privacy here. We're just gonna put a line of these beds like this, and then we're gonna take these AC blower units, make sure that these people are getting plenty of air. <laughs> But then I smell a garbage too. <laughs> and this is where we put our on-call rooms, where we have our sweatshop of doctors and nurses. Okay, so check it out. You see how those computers are blue? That's because they need a seat. If they don't have a seat, you can't hire to those particular stations, right? Here's something I've come to realize. Like if I put a seat here, it covers both of those computers. So I don't even need to give these people all seats. We have to design all this stuff now around how many people can be stuck around one seat. Okay, I feel like we did pretty good. 11 computers, five stools. Let's go hire hiring crazy. Oh my god. Do you see what's happening here? People are just kind of occupying the same space. No, no, no. Don't sit. What are you doing? Oh, that's better than I could have hoped for. Patient is collapsing. <laughs> God, somebody help him. Oh yeah, this is a waiting room. Let's give that some floors so at least we know. There we go, that's much better. Look at that brave soldier. <laughs> just going through the maze. Whoa, did you see that? She just skipped a part of it. Oh my God, are you a speed runner? Okay, so it sounds like we need more ICU beds. It's hard to tell in this garbled mess here, but these are all the ICU beds we have now. Oh my God, we're almost like a real working hospital. I mean, we break all HIPAA violations. You could really just stand outside and watch all the action happen. Complicated diagnosis. Diagnosing a patient and prove to be difficult for the doctor's diagnostic skill. Fine, let me add it. Okay, this one's real easy, first of all. It's obviously lupus. We're gonna have to make sure by doing just all of these tests, and then when you're done, take some pills, and also we're gonna hospitalize you. I also like how everything is like self-serve. Like, when you find out something needs to happen, you just kind of take care of it yourself. Yeah, oh, see? <laughs> I'm ready. Incorrectly diagnosed. Ugh. Wait, after all that, we're sure it's this? I'm not gonna say that's the final diagnosis yet. Not until we try these antiseptics. I like how they don't even put her under the sheets. Like, she gets to be as uncomfortable as possible. This poor woman is just getting carted all over civilization. Uh-oh, male, 69, William Young, appendicitis. Let's go, buddy. It's time for surgery. And I hope you don't mind, but we're gonna have a, uh, <laughs> a couple doctors on standby in case we need it. Also, don't mind Margaret over there. She's just, <laughs> she's just doing her daily dues. Don't worry, buddy. They're gonna take good care of you. You need that appendix out, and these are the right people for the job, maybe. <laughs> and again, don't worry. Hey, why are you guys all just sitting around? around. Cut them open. Should probably move this toilet closer. You never know when someone's gonna need it. Like, literally during the surgery. <laughs> Everyone politely takes turns while this guy's getting his appendix taken out. Okay, it seems like there's a line for everyone to go to the bathroom, so let's go ahead and just put some more toilets down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, close him up. This environment's too sterile. How do we know if he's fine or not? <laughs> Seriously, what's happening to him now? Oh, thank God, finally. <laughs> oh, no. Rachel, you gotta get up. Let's just assume it's appendicitis, and let's assume we gotta get you to surgery, like, ASAP. Actually, you know what? No, let's just give you IV antibiotics instead. Sometimes the appendix doesn't need to be taken out. Just put a pick line in there, you're good to go. Oh, no. Patient died. I like that on her little card here. Rachel Hill, hospitalized, dead. Not necessarily in that order. Like to take a moment 
to mention that Barbara Lee is also just laying here still, just waiting for something to happen. Oh, well, look what we have here. If it isn't Grace, all about urinating, huh? 100% chance of kidney stones. I like it. Well, doctors, I'll take over this case. Definitely gonna have to hospitalize you on this one. Go ahead and just take whatever bed you feel like. So we're gonna diagnose you for kidney stones, which allows us to send you to the ICU. And Grace is like, oh, help me. Don't worry, Grace. We'll take great care of you here. We're just gonna get rid of all these toilets. We've made sure that the best place to go to fulfill your toilet needs is right next to your bed. See, Grace, doesn't it feel nice to feel loved? Well, you know, I think we've done some good work here. I want to say we helped a lot of people, but the more important part is Grace is here. She's got a feeding tube in, and this is where she lives now. All right, so I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. I give this game five out of five doctors, and I'll see you for the next one.